Hello folks, uh, Joe with Smoky and Joe's Pit Barbecue. So today's video guys is a really a, a redemption video. Um, I did cook my uh, first hot and fast brisket uh, a couple weeks ago and I really wasn't happy with the results. And I gotta tell you what happened, I cooked this on my gateway drum and what happened guys is I ended up walking away from it for a little bit and um, the temperature spiked on me and I left the vents, the intakes uh, a little bit more open uh, more open than I should have left it so the temperature spiked on me I went out there and it was close to 480 degrees so what happened is it, it uh, the fat cap on the bottom got a little bit overcooked not burned but overcooked and, and the, the brisket was just um, it was it was roast beef at that point I mean it was it was way overcooked uh, it did take me four and a half hours so Again, it was it was edible. I still ate it, and I almost I, I didn't force myself to eat it, but I wanted to eat it so that I didn't make that mistake again. And uh, so, so this video, guys, is, is a redemption video, so I can redeem myself. Uh, the thing with the gateway drums, guys, no matter what you're cooking, you can't step away from it for a long time because the temperatures will swing from you, uh, especially that day because it was windy. So the temperatures were kind of up and down on me, and, and I think that had to play a, a, a huge part in, into what happened. But uh, again, this is a redemption video for me. I'm going to do it hot and fast again. I've got myself a 17.3 uh, 17, 17 pound um, uh, choice certified Angus beef uh, brisket. So I'm, I'm working with the same pr uh, brisket that I had the last time. Um, I will be using the Heath Riles uh, rubs, uh, the three everyday rub, the pecan rub and the beef rub. I'm also going to be injecting. I got some beef broth. I also put some of the uh, uh, beef rub into the uh, into the uh, beef broth as well and just to give it a little bit more spice i am i am going to rub the brisket down with some olive oil and then introduce uh the three heath riles uh heath riles rubs on top of that guys because heath riles i mean it's got pepper but not like texas pepper um so i'm going to put a little bit more pepper an extra coating of pepper on the top of my brisket uh, just to give it that extra flavor and uh, it helps develop that bark as well um so this morning guys i went out to to select the brisket I went to Walmart first because Walmart, quite honestly, had some pretty good choice briskets. And uh, unfortunately, all I had was select and I wasn't happy. So I had to go to Shamrock Foods, which is a local restaurant supply company to get my brisket. It was on sale at $2.99 a pound, not bad. And today um, they actually gave me $10 off for spending $50. So I ended up getting this for $2.40 a pound, uh, which is a heck of a price. So um, I'm actually, while, while I trim this up, guys, I'm going to show you guys the videos of uh, when I went to Walmart and then when I went to Shamrock Foods and how I selected uh, this brisket. So thanks for watching guys. Again, when we come back, um, I'll have this thing completely trimmed and we'll be ready to rub it down. Thanks guys. All right guys, I'm here at Walmart and unfortunately all I have is uh, select uh, briskets and for what I'm doing on the gateway drum, this isn't gonna work. Plus uh, this is a, a little lower grade of, of beef. But uh, I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, if you can see that, it's not as clean as some of the briskets that I've seen. I, I won't. I wouldn't even buy this to to serve anybody. It's a little brown. It's got some black spots all over it. You know that a lot of that will be cut off, but still, not something that I can use. So I am going to head up to another store and try to find some other briskets. All right, guys. So Walmart didn't have the uh, briskets that I wanted, so I came over to Shamrock Foods. Uh, it's a restaurant supply a store that's got good products. You can see all their meats here. So they do have the uh, certified Angus beef uh, choice briskets for $2.99 a pound. Not a bad price. So I'm going to kind of show you what I look for, guys. Um, obviously, we want to select a brisket that's got a good uh, size flat. As you can see here, it's a, little, it's a little on the thin side. That's definitely not what I want. <clears throat> I want a little bit thicker flat. Um, I probably will be trimming this off anyway, but still, guys, if this is thin, the rest of the flat's going to be pretty thin as well. So just kind of cycle through these. Guys, I'm kind of glad that I saw this pack here. Um, one thing that you don't want to do is select a brisket that looks like it's already got air inside the package, like this one here. See how the plastic is a little loose? That just means that the uh, the plastic has, has got a small hole somewhere and it's got air inside the brisket, so that brisket's not going to be one that you select. I uh, want to select one that's nice and vacuum packed. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at this one here. Not bad, a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker on the flat side, guys, but still not not what I'm looking for. 
Um, you know, if you're going to be paying this kind of money for brisket, I mean, yeah, it's three bucks a pound. That one's like thin too. Um, you know, $2.99 a pound's not bad, but you know, you still want to select a good brisket. This one's got a real thin flat as well. Got some more briskets here. This one's got a really nice thick flat. Uh, yeah, not, not bad. Not bad. This one's not bad. Let me see what else I got in here. This one's a little thin. <clears throat> this one's real thin. Whoa, this one's got a... It's got a good size flat on the top, but the front of it's a little thin. This one's a little thin as well. On the flat, this looks like a good size one here. <clears throat> okay, you can see it's got a good size flat. I'm really liking this one, guys. It's a 16, almost a 17 pound brisket. I'm really liking the color on this, the fat, the marbling in there. So actually, uh, you know, this looks like it's got some air in it that meets a little brown on the edge, which I'm gonna trim anyway, but I don't like that it's got some air in it. So I'm gonna go back to the very first one I think I saw. Not this one. Uh, is it this one? Or this one? That was definitely this one. Uh, this one's a little bit thicker. Again, this one's nice and nice and vacuum packed. You know, the edges, guys, I am going to trim that off, but it doesn't look like this one had some air that was introduced to it. So I think this is the lucky, the lucky winner. 17.28 pounds, got a good size flat, got good marbling. This is the one that I'm going to look for. All right, guys. We'll see you guys back at home. All right, guys. We're back. So I've got my brisket trimmed up. Uh, I've got my flat uh, nice and nice and trim. Got about a quarter inch to half an inch uh, of fat on the on the bottom. And then I've got my my point cut up, and I cut that point into two sections. Guys, usually, actually, what I was going to do with this one is butterfly it um, because it is a thick piece of meat, but we'll make some big. Uh, big burned ends out of that and just your standard burned ends with this piece here So I've already rubbed a little bit of olive oil on them guys and that's just to get the rub to stick But what, I, what I'm also going to do is inject this with a beef uh, broth as well And that's what I have in here And I'm going to show you real quick just how I do this I, I kind of go in, in inch square inch sections guys and just go ahead and go into each piece move the uh, move the needle around okay and then go ahead and inject and you'll see that it'll plump up once you're done with that section okay stick it in another little area and go ahead and inject okay pretty simple process what you what you want to do oh look at that i squirted myself what, what you want to do guys is is create or build a little pocket in there so that the injection you can see how it plumped up there the injection has a space to go into our a cavity if you will okay just like that you can see it pump up and then just go backwards the other way and this takes no time at all guys and you will get some that will come out obviously which will help uh, the rub to stick Not going to inject on the opposite side guys on the fat side the reason for it is I'm going to cook this fat side down because again we're cooking your heat source is going to come from the bottom and I don't want to for my injection to come out and you will lose some of it you know just just by nature if you will you will lose some of the injection which is okay but the thing is to get some of this in there to help keep the, uh, the brisket nice and moist Almost 
Da? So that's good guys, and I'm also going to be injecting my, my points. So what I want to show you is how I'm going to rub this down. Uh, I'm using Heath Riles uh, rubs, and I'm putting a good coating of this product. Guys, this is a big piece of meat, so it's okay to, to put enough of this rub. Don't forget your edges. Also rub the uh, bottom side of this brisket. I guess I could have rubbed the uh, bottom first before I inject it, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and do that afterwards. So next, I'm going to go with the uh, beef rub. Just like so. And again, guys, they do call these rubs, but you don't have to rub the uh, the spices into the meat because you will get clumps of spice and that's definitely not something that's good uh, biting into that's for sure so if you do have to if you do want to work the rub into the meat just pat it down I'll show you what I'm going to do here I'm going to rub these edges now. Okay. so just like that so just pat it guys okay just pat it um, just to get it to stick a little bit better then the last coating is this pecan rub Really good. It's got a, a sweet flavor to it. Really good on ribs, guys. If you guys have seen my other videos, really like this stuff on on ribs. Again, don't forget your sides. This will help create a nice bark to it too. All right, and the last thing, guys, as I mentioned earlier, um, Heath Riles does use pepper in his rubs. But, um, oops, because we are in Texas, um, we like a little bit more pepper in our, in our brisket. So I'm going to put a light coating of this as well. Oh, it might be heavy to some, but it's kind of light to me. Just get more pepper on there. We love the pepper here in Texas. And this is a coarse black pepper. Um, for this kind of stuff, guys, it, it does work better to use a coarse instead of a finely ground pepper. And again, it looks like a lot, guys, but this is a big piece of meat, so it'll it'll take the rub and the spices that you put on there. Again, just pat it down, and don't forget your edges. All right, guys, that's looking really, really good. All right, so I'm gonna let that sit. I'm actually gonna rub the other side as well, um, and then I'm gonna inject my points and rub them down the exact same way guys i'm going to go ahead and warm up my gateway drum let these rest for about an hour until the uh the, my fire gets nice and hot and um and then i'll show you what i'm how i'm going to place these inside my smoker stay tuned all right guys welcome back so we're outside got my drum the uh, internal temperature right now on the drum is is 420 degrees so i went ahead and choked my intake tubes down just to bring the temperature down I'm going to go ahead and drop this brisket. Here's our gorgeous looking flat here. Put that on one side. Get points. Just like that. So the next step, guys, is I'm going to regulate my temperature down to 325 so I'm going to stand right here and watch it uh, make sure this thing doesn't uh, get too hot on me so again it's, it's still at actually it just came down a bit. but uh, I'm going to try to maintain 425 degrees I'm sorry uh, 325 degrees so I'm going to bring this thing down I'm going to wait 
right here by its side, make sure it doesn't get too, uh, the temperature doesn't get too hot on me. So I will be choking it down to 325 and I will be spritzing about every 30 minutes or so and rotating the grate inside my drum. That way I get uh, even cook. So um, we'll catch up guys uh, in about an hour, uh, hour and a half or so, and, and uh, we'll see what it looks like then. Thanks. All right, folks, so we're back. It's been two and a half hours uh, since I put these briskets in, or the uh, brisket, I should say. And uh, I've been spraying about every 30 minutes or so. So we're gonna open this up, take a look at it. Let's see how it's looking. You know, I, I'm, I don't have the color I want yet. It does have a really nice color. Um, but not quite what I'm looking for, so I do wanna I do want to probe here guys for just real quick and it's whoa it's really tender let's get a temperature temperature reading we're at 167 168 163 let's check these uh, these points here we're at 155 on the points feeling really really tender whoa now this is a bigger piece we're at 179 on this one but you know what it's feeling really tender as well really like where this is going guys so I'm probably gonna wrap in 30 minutes or so I'm uh, just gonna spray these down using uh, apple juice and this sucker is looking really good um, you know, the apple juice does have uh, sugar, so that'll help caramelize the the outside and give it a nice uh, color. So about 30 minutes, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap these. And uh, I think I'm going through the saw right now. Again, two and a half hours, so that means if I wrap in 30 minutes, uh, it, took three, or it takes three hours to wrap it. So uh, we'll see what the color looks like at that point. Uh, if if I, I still don't have the color, guys, I might take it to three and a half hours uh, before I wrap instead of the three so uh, stay tuned all right guys welcome back so it's been a little over three hours three hours and five minutes uh, since I put my briskets in or my brisket in and uh, again it was probing real tender about 30 minutes ago so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and, and wrap it and have you guys take a look it's uh, pumped up really really nice as you can see here okay Actually, I'm going to turn it this way. And what I'm going to do before I wrap it, guys, is just uh, fill it, put a bit, little bit more rub on there. And it's looking really, really good. Okay, just like that. And some of the rub will come off, guys, as you're spritzing it. So let's take a... Uh, Temperature-wise, I'm at 164. 161, 173. So I've been in the stall now, guys, for about an hour. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and wrap at that point. So at this point, I've got some beef uh, broth here, too. I'm going to put a little bit of that, a little bit of, of this in the foil. Whoa. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. It's staying really, really moist, guys, because I've been spritzing it with apple juice, but I do want a little bit of liquid in there. All right. Just gonna wrap this nice and tight. And I am gonna double wrap this, but I'm gonna keep it fat side down. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change that at all. Okay, I'm going to put this back in my smoker, probably for, probably for about an hour or so guys, again I'm right at the four hour, four hour mark, uh, my, um, my point is still, still in there, I'm going to leave that for about another hour sitting by itself in there. And I probably won't wrap those for about an hour. 
So that's what we're at right now, guys. And uh, we'll check in an hour and check the tenderness of the brisket. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So we're right at the uh, four hour mark now. And what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to pull my my point meat and go ahead and wrap this, okay? Get my uh, broth and some more of the uh, Heath Riles beef rub. Sprinkle some more on top. I'm not ready to cut these up, but I will. I will cube these here, here in a bit. And then a little bit of the uh, beef broth, just like so. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Just like so, and put it back on the smoker. My, my other piece of my point. A little bit of beef broth. Try to save some of the juice, guys, or the au jus, if you will. So it's been wrapped in foil for about an hour, and it's definitely uh, shrunk in size a little bit, which is expected. I'll go ahead and probe it, guys. Again, I'm not looking for an internal temperature, but look at that. Man, it's like butter. All right, so we're at 202, 193, 190. So it's not, uh, I'm not ready to pull this yet, guys. I'm gonna actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, put it back on the grate um, for about 30 minutes. Ooh, man, this thing is tender. All right. Take you guys in closer here so you guys can see what it looks like. So I'm gonna save this juice. So here we go guys. So again I got my points, my point meat uh, wrapped up. That'll be wrapped for about an hour. And here's my flat. Again, it was wrapped in foil for about an hour. I'm gonna put a little bit more of the Heath Riles beef rub. And what this is gonna do, guys, probably gonna sit in here for 30 minutes. And we'll take a look at it. It's going to firm up that bark. Okay. Right now it's real nice and soft. But uh, I guarantee you in 30 minutes, guys, uh, this thing is going to be ready to go. So stay tuned. All right, guys, we're back outside. Uh, total cook time right now is at 4 hours and 45 minutes. Um, to be honest with you, my flat just wasn't uh, raising up to, or getting up to temperature. And I just probed it. And we're right at 208. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it. And show you guys what that looks like here she is looking really good really happy with the results extremely juicy so I'm gonna let that rest guys I'm gonna cover it cover this thing up for let it rest probably for about an hour okay I'll take that inside the house all right, guys, looks like we had a little bit of camera trouble there. No, don't know what happened, but I restarted my camera here. But uh, I pulled out my flat. Hopefully that came out. And uh, I went ahead and cut up my uh, my point meat into some cubes. Some were a little bit larger than the other ones. That's okay, guys. And I used my homemade barbecue sauce glaze, if you will. And I also put almost an entire bottle of the Cosmos Q uh, rib glaze. This is the peach jalapeno, which is really, really good stuff, guys. So... Um, Get all of my burnt ends nicely coated. 
And guys, as you can see, these things are really, really tender. Some of the fat got a little bit burned on the foil on a couple of these, but didn't affect the, the burn tent at all. So I'm gonna put these back into the gateway drum for about another hour. We'll check them in 30 minutes, see how they're looking, so stay tuned. All right, folks, we're back and we are done with this cook. Um, and I'm pretty impressed so far. Um, my uh, brisket, my flat has been resting for for about an hour now. So total cook time on my flat was four and a half hours. Well, you guys got to see the process on my video. And then um, it rested for about an hour. And you know, it's, it's super juicy, guys. Uh, again, really happy with this. And we're gonna slice into this thing and see what we came up with. Because of this trim, guys, it's just, this is a really aggressive trim for like a competition. You wouldn't do this, obviously. I mean, you could, but if you're just feeding some friends and family, I mean, you wouldn't have to go to this extreme. Um, but this is more of a competition uh, cook. So, um, I, again, I did, I did trim it so that uh, my meat is running this way, okay, the grain is. So I don't have to guess at where I'm gonna slice, guys. I know that my grain is running uh, uh, north to south here, if you will. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice into it. Ooh, really nice smoke ring. I'm gonna try to get these, uh, like a number two pencil that everybody shoots for. Not even going to trim that fat at the bottom guys it's super super juicy look at this pool really nice i'm going to give this a shot but uh look at that smoke ring too again it pulls really nice okay so i'm going to give this a shot here <laughs> wow I can see, guys, quite honestly, why <clears throat> why these hot and fast briskets are are winning in competitions. I mean, the, the, the flavor is second to none. And um, man, I'm gonna try another piece, guys. This is so good. Hmm. Wow. That bark on the edge is amazing. Guys, I've cooked a lot of good briskets. This thing is dripping juice still. I've cooked a lot of good briskets, but this has got to be up there. I cooked a, a really good brisket on my Yoda one time. It came out really good. I think that's still my best one with nothing but salt and pepper. Smoked it for like 17 hours, something crazy. And um, that was really good. So, guys, you can see the juice is still coming out of this brisket. So, as you can see here, guys, I do have a, a fork method that I'm going to, let me show you to see if I don't burn myself. But look at these burnt ends, guys. Okay. These, I had a, a little piece and I gave one to my wife as well. These have got to be the, bur the best burnt ends that I have ever made. Um, I did use my homemade glaze barbecue sauce with this Cosmos Q peach jalapeno um, rib glaze and let me tell you I'm gonna pull one of these guys just so you guys can see look at this okay extremely tender guys I'm gonna try this mmm this is hot that is hot mmm Those things are simple, guys. That is the best burnt ends by far that I've ever cooked. I will wash this down, guys. Really happy with the results, guys. Cheers to you. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't yet uh, subscribed to my channel, uh, please do so. Leave uh, comments. 
and uh, we'll answer every comment guys thanks for watching thanks again for those of you guys that are subscribers and uh, invite your friends thanks for watching guys until next time joe with smoking joe's pit barbecue see ya